Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our second video of Chapter 10, which is Find Arc Measures. We have two objectives for this video. First one, we are going to calculate arc measures. That just comes from the title of the section. And then we are also going to determine if two arcs are congruent. So we're going to start off this video with some more vocabulary. I know the first video had a lot of vocabulary with tangent and secant and chord and diameter, but we're going to have to add on to that a little bit. The first really important vocab term is central angle. So a central angle is an angle with the vertex at the center of the circle. So I'm going to draw us a figure up here. I'm going to put in our center. This right here is called a central angle. So I'm going to label it ABC. So angle ABC is a central angle. Its vertex is B, and B is the center of the circle. So that's a central angle. An arc is a portion of the circle. So the circle that we're looking at, AC, is an arc. The way we denote that is with the endpoints and a little arc over the top. So it's just as if you cut out a portion of the circle. Next term, or really idea, is the measure of an arc. So we measure angles in degrees. We say an angle is 90 degrees, an angle is 10 degrees, an angle is 45 degrees. We say the same thing with arcs. An arc can be 45 degrees or 180 degrees. So I'm going to say it's measured in degrees. Next thing that you need to know is the measure of an arc is equal to the measure of the central angle. So in the case above, if angle ABC was 40 degrees, then the, the corresponding arc would be 40 degrees. There's three different types of arc, a minor arc, a major arc, and a semicircle. A minor arc is 0 to 180 degrees. So 100 degrees is a minor arc. 160 degrees is a minor arc. 45 degrees is a minor arc. And it's denoted by two points. So an example above would be arc AC. That's a minor arc. A major arc is 180 degrees through, through 360 degrees. So 300 degrees, that's a major arc. Um, 200 degrees, that's a major arc. This is denoted by three points. So in the circle above, if I added a point here, like point D, a major arc would be arc ADC. So outlining arc ADC is A, D, C. That would be a major arc. And then the special case is a semicircle. A semicircle is exactly 180 degrees. Exactly 180 degrees. It's exactly half of a circle. And then something to remember is the whole circle is 360 degrees. So again, minor arc, it's less than half of a circle, it's 180 degrees or less, and it's denoted by two points. A major arc is more than half of a circle, it's more than 180, and it's denoted by three points. And then a semicircle is exactly 180. When you choose your two points or your three points for the minor arc or the major arc, they have to be at least the two end points. So for arc ADC, I had to choose A and C because that's where the arc starts and ends and then I picked another point in the middle. So you always have to at least pick the point where the arc starts and ends, and then you can pick another point in the middle if it's a major arc. Okay, you will notice below it says circle formula sheet. Um, you may already have that formula sheet currently, but we're not gonna fill it out yet. We're gonna fill it out in class. And if you haven't gotten one, you'll get it in class. 
Moving on is example number one. It says find the measure of each arc, classify as a minor arc, major arc, or a semicircle. So arc BC, that's this little one right here. Okay, it's denoted by two points, so this is going to be a minor arc. And then I need to find the measure. Well, I notice that segment BAD is a diameter. It goes through the center of the circle. That means it cuts the circle in half, 180 on each side. Well, I have 148 already, so if I take 180 and I subtract 148, I get 32 degrees. So that's this little central angle right here is 32 degrees. If the central angle is 32 degrees, then the arc is also 32 degrees. So arc BC is going to be 32 degrees, which also makes it a minor arc. It's less than 180. Next, I have to find arc CD. That's this arc right here. The central angle is 148, so the arc is also going to be 148 degrees. Okay, this one's a little tricky. We normally would think that it's a major arc because it's more than 90. But remember, a major arc is more than 180. In this case, 148 is still a minor arc. And then DB, that's this arc right here. It's exactly half of a circle. A circle is 360, so arc DB is going to be 180 degrees. 180 degrees is a semicircle. So that shouldn't be too bad. We're going to add on with a postulate here. It says the measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of the two arcs. All that's saying is if you put two arcs together, you can add their measures. So in the example above, if I was looking for arc BCD, this arc right here, I'm adding one arc to a second arc, so I would add their measures. I would add 32 and 148. That's all this postulate is saying. So let's look at the two examples below it. It says first, what is the measure of arc BCD? So BCD, that's this one right here. Notice it has three points, which means it's going to be a major arc, which means it's going to be more than 180. Okay, so arc BCD, that's arc BC, and then I added arc CD. Okay, I'm adding two arcs together. I can add their measures together. BC is 95 degrees. CD is 114. So I'm going to get the measure of arc BCD to be... 209 degrees, Okay, which verifies that it's a major arc. Like I said, I said it should be greater than 180, and it is. Next, we are asked for the measure of arc BDC. Okay, so you'll notice it's the same three letters, but in different order. So the second one is saying start at B, end at C, with D in the middle. So I'm going to start with B, end at C, and put D in the middle. That's this arc right here this time. Okay, so I know that the whole circle is 360. Because I want BDC, that's going to be BD add CD. Well, CD I already know is 114. I don't know BD though, so I have to find BD. Well, the entire circle is 360. So BD is going to be 360, subtract 95, subtract 114, and I get 151. So BD is 151 degrees. Okay, so then BDC is going to be 151, add 114. So I get BDC to be 265 degrees. Okay, so something to notice is that I used the same three letters and I got two different measures. So it's extremely important that you pay attention to the ordering of the letters because order matters. And arc BCD is different than arc BDC. So please pay attention to that. So that's measures of arcs. Now we're going to flip the page, please. We're going to move on to something new. It says, which of these is not like the other? In two of the pictures below, arc B is congruent to arc CD, which picture does not show congruent arcs. So remember, congruent means that they have the same length. OK, 
Okay, so in the first picture, this arc definitely looks to be the same length as this arc. So these are congruent. You look at the next two. Where does it look like the arcs are different lengths? Hopefully, you chose the third picture. Here, in the third picture, I'm looking at this arc and this arc. CD, in this case, is clearly bigger than AB. So in this case, AB is not congruent to CD. In the second picture, they are congruent. So this is gonna help us come up with criteria for congruent arcs. How are the first two pictures different from the last picture? Well, in the first picture, the two arcs came from the same circle. In the second picture, they came from different circles. One thing to notice is that in both pictures, the angles that correspond to the arcs are congruent. So congruent arcs are gonna have the same measure And then, I also have to look, here's one radius, here's another radius, they're the same. Second picture, this radius is congruent to this radius because it's marked. Third picture, I have one radius and I have another radius that are clearly not the same. That's the important part, is congruent arcs have the same measure and they have the same radius or congruent radii. That was true in the first two cases. In the first picture, the radii are congruent because they come from the same circle. The second picture, the radii are congruent because they're marked congruent. In the third picture, the radii are not congruent, which is why the arcs are not congruent. So we have two examples, examples three and four. It says, are, are the arcs below congruent? Explain. So looking at example three, I have two criteria, same measure, same radius. In this case, both arcs measure 145 degrees because the angles do. So this arc is 145 degrees. This arc is also 145 degrees. And they have congruent radii because the radii are marked. So I'm going to say yes, A, sorry, that should be a B. AB is congruent to CD because same measure. So that's in degrees, and then congruent radii. Okay, pause the video right now and do example four on your own, please. Are the arcs congruent? Yes or no, and then why? Okay, so let's see how we did. You should have said no. Arc MN is not congruent to PQ. Do they have the same measure? Yes, they have the same measure. Both have central angles of, of 120, so the arcs are 120. The difference is that one arc has a radius of five degrees and the other circle has a radius of four, I mean five units and four units. They are not congruent because they have different radii. Hopefully you got that one right. If not, hopefully you now see the reasoning behind why the, the arcs are not congruent. It's very important that you explain your answer when the question asks you to. Okay, so we had two objectives this video. One was to calculate arc measures. So that was using the idea of central angles. Uh, the measure of a central angle is equal to the measure of the arc. And then we determined if two arcs are congruent. That's what we just did. Two arcs are congruent if they have the same measure and the same radii. You have two examples to try below. So let's find the indicated measure. In the first uh, example, you're finding the measure of arc QS. In the second example, you're finding the measure of arc LKJ. I will help you out and tell you that the answer to the first question is 154 degrees. I'm not telling you answer the, the answer to the second question. I would like you to complete both problems tomorrow when you come to class. If you have just answers and no work, you will not receive credit. So please make sure that you show work for both questions. Good luck.